we want to find the Taylor polynomial of degree five centered at c equals zero for the function f of x equals cosine x. And then we'll use the Taylor remainder theorem to find all the values of x for which this approximation is within 0 0.0014 of the true value of f of x. Notice how the Taylor polynomial is centered at c equals zero, so we could also call this the Maclaurin polynomial. And if we know the power series for cosine x centered at zero given here, we can very easily find our Taylor polynomial. Notice how there is no degree five term, and therefore the degree five Taylor polynomial would only consist of the first three terms of our power series here. But we'll go ahead and apply, but we'll go through the process of determining the Taylor polynomial centered at c equals zero using the definition of a Taylor polynomial given here centered at c. But notice if c is zero, all these function values would be evaluated at zero, and instead of having the quantity x minus c, we just have x raised to various powers. But because we're looking for the degree five Taylor polynomial, we'll begin by determining the first five derivatives of our function and evaluating those functions at zero. And notice on this slide, I did change the polynomial to the Maclaurin polynomial where it's centered at zero and we just have x, x squared and so on. So beginning with our function f of x, we need to find the first five derivatives. So f prime of x would be equal to negative sine x. Second derivative would be equal to negative cosine x. Third derivative is equal to positive sine x. The fourth derivative is equal to cosine x. And the fifth derivative is equal to negative sine x. And now we'll evaluate each of these functions at zero. So f of zero is equal to cosine zero or one. F prime of zero is equal to negative sine zero, which is zero. F double prime of zero equals negative cosine zero or negative one. F triple prime of zero equals sine zero or zero. And the fourth derivative at zero is equal to cosine zero or one. And the fifth derivative at zero is equal to negative sine zero, which is zero. So our degree five Taylor polynomial centered at zero is equal to f of zero, which is one, plus f prime of zero times x, that would be zero times x. And then the next term would be f double prime of zero divided by two factorial times x squared. But since the second derivative at zero is negative, we'll write minus one divided by two factorial times x squared plus the third derivative at zero, which is zero, divided by three factorial times x cubed plus the fourth derivative at zero, which is one divided by four factorial times x to the fourth, and then finally plus the fifth derivative at zero, which is zero divided by five factorial times x to the fifth. Now let's go ahead and simplify. T of x is equal to one, this would be zero, this would be minus one-half x squared. This would be zero. Four factorial is 24, so we have plus one over 24 x to the fourth, and this last term is also zero. So this would be our Maclaurin polynomial, or our Taylor polynomial centered at zero. If we go back to the first slide just for a moment, notice how the terms we found are the same three terms of this power series centered at zero. Now for the next step, we want to find all the values of x for which this approximation using the Taylor polynomial is within 0 0.0014 of the true function value of f of x. And notice how we are limiting ourselves to this closed interval. Well, we know the error or the absolute value of r sub n of x will be less than or equal to the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus one derivative of f evaluated at z, where z is in this interval here, times the absolute value of x minus c raised to the power of n plus one divided by n plus one factorial. So we need to find the max 
of the absolute value of, in our case, because we're using the degree five Taylor polynomial, it would be the sixth derivative of f evaluated at some z times, because c is zero, we have the absolute value of x to the sixth divided by six factorial. And this value needs to be less than or equal to zero point zero zero one four. We're going back to our previous slide. The fifth derivative is equal to negative sine x. So the sixth derivative would be equal to negative cosine x. So let's rewrite this as the max of the absolute value of negative cosine z times the absolute value of x to the sixth divided by six factorial less than or equal to zero point zero zero one four. Well we know that the cosine function value has a max of positive one and a min of negative one. So notice at zero we'd have negative cosine zero which is negative one but we're taking the absolute value and therefore this maximum value here would just be positive one, which leaves us the equation, the absolute value of x to the sixth divided by six factorial, which is 720, must be less than or equal to 0 0.0014. Now we'll multiply both sides of the equation by 720. So 0 0.0014 times 720 gives us 1.008 which means the absolute value of x to the sixth must be less than or equal to 1.008. Now we can take the sixth root of both sides or raise both sides to the one-sixth power. To solve for the absolute value of x. So we'd have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1.008 raised to the one-sixth power, which gives us approximately 1.0013. Which means as long as x is in the closed interval from negative 1.0013 to positive 1.0013, the Taylor polynomial approximation will be within 0 0.0014 of the true function value of f of x. Let's take a look at this graphically. In blue we have the graph of the original function f of x equals cosine x, and in red we have the graph of our Taylor polynomial centered at zero. So we found that on the closed interval from negative 1.0013 to positive 1.0013, this interval here, the Taylor polynomial approximation will be within 0 0.0014 of the true function value of f of x. I hope you found this helpful.